before that was like 100 pips. I don't know what's happened to it. <laughs> Which one? Asian. Asian oh, for yeah. GJ is just mad. Like, it's been moving like crazy. Like, go back, like, go back, like, a half a year. God damn, that thing was rangy. Like, it's awful. But yeah, it's pretty, doing pretty nice. Yeah, it used to be yeah. really good. And then, <clears throat> and then it just it did. started ranging really bad. Yeah, I, I remember waking up every single morning and, like, God damn, like, that looked like ass. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it looked horrendous. Yeah, it was not fun for a while. Yeah, man, definitely. It was the best. But yeah, I think I think later on today, I think if if well, I mean, as the range, you just need to wait for this range to break, and we're going to be good for sales or buys. But that was a bit annoying before that. I I I'm more preferable for sales at the moment for for today. Yeah, we'll see. Because I think, yeah. I mean, I thought if we were going to go up, we should have went up already. Like when we got above here. Well, yeah, that's that, that's the thing, and it rejected it so quickly. Right. Yeah, pretty high. higher time frames, obviously. Yeah. So, are we going back to the bottom of the range now? Yeah, I could I could see a lot of those wicks as well. If you look in the four hours, there's some big wicks to fill. Um, that they made like just before the close last year, last week. So there'll be some nice targets to get to, but just chilling. It should be good, <laughs> but yes, yeah, it's, it's it's hard when it's just range and you have to just wait. <laughs> yeah, especially when you only got an hour and a half. It just kind of if it ranges, the day is over. Yeah, but that's yeah. the thing, isn't it? If if you don't turn up, you miss the good days. Oh yeah, gotta show up every day. <laughs> yep, even on these days, unfortunately. But I, th- I think the main thing why people lose money at the start is because they try and get into the range. They try and trade out the ranges. And if it doesn't go well, they get annoyed. And then they keep on trying this range. And, like, you could easily lose 30, 40 pips in a range if you're getting annoyed with it. Like, <laughs> I'll try one. If, I've, if I'm wanting it to push and it doesn't work, I'll leave that for the whole session. Like, not touch it anymore because it can range for a good couple hours. Mm-hmm. Especially GJ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you could lose your whole account I'm just trying to get angry at the range. Literally. But you'll you'll you'll, you'll like justify it with like saying, "Oh, well, my pip, my, my stop loss now is only like six pips, five pips." But if you do that six times, <laughs> like you made yeah, the last three gotta... pips, like, and then the commission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's just keep with it. What other um, what other uh, what's it called charts do you trade? What other, uh, the, I used to look at EA as well, but I found it. I do yeah. best when I only focus on one, so I always just Definitely. end up right back at GJ, always. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, GJ works for me quite nicely. Yeah, usually. Usually it moves pretty pretty well. But yeah, I'm thinking Yeah. with this rejection here, I think we're going to get a tap kind of back here. Mm-hmm. Yep. And oh, yes. Then, but I don't know. So the daily... I, I mean, at first, I thought we were going to come back and fill this daily and get back up here. Mm-hmm. Oh, come on, GJ. Three more pips. Yeah, it's pushing. Yeah. It's pushing hard now. Yeah, I jumped in some cells once we broke this low here. I might go break even just because yeah. it's in a range. And I don't want to lose yeah, today. It's... Yeah, I might go break even. That's I don't exactly lose what I would have done. Yep. Yeah, I think I think, um, I think you might be all right if we push. Yeah, I'm almost at first TP. Come on, baby, three pips, let's go. Um, but yeah, originally when we came to the session, uh, my analysis was we're going to see rejection in here and we're going to push and flip this. But now mm-hmm. that we had this happen, I'm kind of like, well, yeah. Okay, come on. If it does this to me again, I'm going to have a heart attack. So yesterday, it pushed 9.6 pips, and my first CP was 10. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) I'm closing custom. Delete, delete. Get rid of it. Come on. 
Okay. Yeah, it's bottom of that range. It is. Look, I, I, I do think this is going to push a bit further. To be honest. Yes. Yeah. Look at this. I secured nice I'm done. But yeah, no. Um, what was Beautiful. I saying? I, so yesterday it pushed nine point six pips, and then turned around and <laughs> went break even, took me out. So then just now it, it hit like nine point six, nine point eight, nine point nine, and it started to pull back to like eight. <laughs> and I was like, if it all oh, not again, so I would have. Yeah. Had a, I would have been my, a salty. My uh, 10 pip kind of things starting to change now. I'm starting to um because I've been seeing uh a lot of a lot of moves that I'm missing out on. Well no, not missing out on I'm in great moves, but I'm closing way too early just to for this 10 pip rule when actually it was gonna fill the range and I knew it was gonna fill the range with with how much pressure it was given. Yeah. And like I was like, well, you know, if you think about probability wise, right? If I'm pushing down already 10 pips in profit and we're in the middle of this range and there's a good, you know, 60, 70% chance. 80% chance of it to fill that range. Why am I closing now? Like if you think probability wise, if it yeah. was a 50% chance and yeah, you just sack it off, but because it's quite a high probability thing, if I get 20 pips there, it's, it's a big, it's a big ass move. Like, mm -hmm. so that's what I've been looking on just range zone to zone. Um, but obviously I put my stops to break even six, seven pips in profit. So I'm, I'm sure yeah. of all that. Uh, yeah. I used to do risks. To like I would uh, like in the beginning when the live stream started, I was always closing mm -hmm. something at 10 pips and going to break even. And then I started to get into yeah. targeting like a set risk to reward. Um, and it works. All like, right. And, yeah. You know, I've simul simulated it and sometimes it takes a few weeks or a month or whatnot for the probability to play mm -hmm. out and give you that into profit. But I don't know. I just felt like yeah. for my personality winning every day with a small win and kind of, yeah you know, is better for me mentally than, I mean, even though it makes money long-term, it was still like, oh, well, I'm down still. And just eventually, I guess yeah. I'll make money. But I've been noticing yeah. that like 10 pips hits almost every freaking day with what I do. And the two to one hits yeah. once or twice a week on a good week. Yeah. And then exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And when I was doing that, it, uh, I wasn't going break even at 10 pips. I was going, I was just trailing my stop based on the support and resistance that was created, like through structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just not minimizing super yeah. well. But I feel I've yeah, never done exactly. zone to zone. I feel like that, that would be really good, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I think it's not even like I'm not talking about massive zones. I mean, in like, you know, it's pushing, it's coming to, to, to my, my, my 10 pips but i can see you know it's going to squeeze out another three four pips right mm -hmm. or so sometimes it could be it could be another six seven eight nine um but like you know what i mean them three four five pips do rack up like obviously if you just add them up over the week it's like oh yeah they can actually cut my losses quite easily because i because i keep my losses about six seven pips um so you know that, that extra little push that's gonna i know it's gonna give me why why am i cutting out so early when i know for a fact it's gonna push that and then all, there's also ways to do it. For example, you know, if it pushes past 10 pips, even if you wanted to, you could drop down to the one minute and put your, put your stop loss at maybe nine pips so you, or eight pips profit. Um, and then you've got all the exponential growth if it's just going to push really quickly now. And then you've still secured nine, eight pips. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. lots of different ways for me. I've looked for stuff like that because I'm just wasting a lot of pips and, you know, for these moves. So how are you managing? I mean, I'm, what have you found like the best way so, to, to manage for you? My, my main thing, my main thing is I just, I hate. So do you know how other people, so I'd say like Roger. So if he's in a profitable trade and it comes back to his entry, he cuts half. Yep. See, he, he does that. Um, I don't do that. I'm, I'm out. I'm at break even. I, I get out of the trade. I think it just, it just, I hate being in a, a blue trade and then it comes back out. Cause I always say you can always re-enter a trade. Mm -hmm. um you can't you can't re-enter a losing trade so, and I, i've seen them most times if it does come back up if i'm in six seven pips profit it comes back up it's either going to be a very dodgy profit like profitable trade or it's, it's going to hit my stop loss so i'd rather just get out of the break even and watch someone else lose their money <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean i totally agree with that absolutely I mean, I, I normally, I normally drop down to the five minute, to be honest, um, and put my stop, if, if I can get my stop loss, um, in profits under a five, under or above a five minute, mm -hmm. I normally quite like that. Like candle, like you trail a candle, a candle. Yeah. 
chain it, trade it, kind of the candle. And sometimes that shit runs. Like you can literally do that for an hour and it's still going down. If you if you if you catch that, it's, it's delicious. Yeah. I feel like those that, that would be some wild. That would be like some crazy scalping. <laughs> no, like, no, I don't. Like I don't mean for entries. Something. I mean for just. I mean for like runners. For for runners, I just trail on the fives. Like, yeah, no, I'm saying runners, like if, yeah. if, uh, <laughs> if you get like four or five minute candles and four or five five minute candles in a row each pushing like like GJ like ten pips like you're just sitting there <laughs> giggling like a schoolgirl because your runners just dominating. Yeah. Well, with 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 the volume that's coming in now, it's just ridiculous. I mean. 15 minute candles are like 15 pips now. Like, I mean, 30 pips. Like sometimes uh, yesterday was ridiculous. Yeah. There's, that's why I like measures. I measures. Yeah. Go ahead. Say so it's carry on. Sorry. You carry on. Sorry. Oh, I was just saying that's why I like the 10 pip with GJ because it, like, it's if you've got a decent type of like strategy or rules that you follow, 10 pips mm-hmm. is cake. Well, I'm just like, that's like a, a few minutes of a 15 minute candle or a few seconds sometimes oh uh, yeah where like if you're on uj like exactly. a 10 minute candle could be like, or 10 pip could be like an hourly candle <laughs> yeah and like gj in london so quick so i don't know i found for yeah, london G- especially if gj breaks a high or a low there's a very Definitely. very good chance you're getting 10 pips yeah, I see you guys impulse them a lot when you're breaking zones pretty pretty rapidly. I need to get more used to that. I think it's because I'm more used to New York, and New York is very much like you just have to wait and wait and wait mm-hmm. and wait, and like it'll come to towards the end of a zone, it's going to break, and then it closes, and then you know it wicks back up, and then it starts to come. It's very slow. Mm-hmm. I'd say New York is very very slow. I think the move the moves are still there. And it comes nicely, but you have more. T- you have more time to get into the move whereas london like you just miss it like it'll fly up and you you're already 30 pips that like you're already 30 pips too late mate yep yeah no so so when when a candle breaks higher low you call it an impulse entry um i would so like so for example us the high you mean the previous or like a zone so like my entry was right so the one today yes i was right there no, 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 that's not impulse. I mean, you know, your buy at the, uh, before. Like that one. Yeah, that's impulse for me. Yeah, that because... one I would agree for impulse, but like this one. Yeah. I th- oh, no, that, that one's not. No, no, yeah. no. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the best confirmation out there, honestly. Yeah. If you've got if you've got a solid 15 minute candle in one of your directions, it's very likely you're going to continue another 10 pips after, really, isn't it? Yeah. Apart, from, apart from that GJ buy before. <laughs> But then see, this is where that rule kind of comes in because if every time we, it's like just structure, but like candle structure, you break the high, right? So then breakouts, I hate breakout trades, but the 1% chance of me taking them, if we would have broke this high, maybe I throw a small something in with the anticipation yeah. that we're going to leave this zone really quickly. But every time, if you look at like fake, if you look at fake outs, 90 percent of the time they don't if they break up they don't break the high if they come down if they break down they don't break the low when they go down i think i said that right definitely yeah so i I tell people you know if you if you're doing a quite a breakout candle you know it's very likely that it could it could fake out quite easily you know just put your stops to break even pretty pretty quick like you know, you've got all of the momentum if it wants to push up that you want to look for. And if you stop us to break even, you're fine. I mean, if it does touch it, touch it. Like you tried it and it didn't work. But yeah, I was waiting for that. That bearish candle that closed really solid back in that range. Mm. It was actually, it was it was hovering on 148.41. And that was really good for me because I could really get a nice um, stop loss at that point. So it was hovering there. And I was like, right, it's hovering on the top of that zone. Good. If this starts pushing back up and flips that 15 candle back at 48, mm-hmm. uh, one, no, 148.48, I'm going to enter with a stop loss at 148.41 because I don't want it to come back to the lower that 15. So that's what I've been looking at because I've been really getting some really nice trades and really, really tight stops. That's like a seven pip stop, eight pip stop. So how do um, you, what, what is like the way you, you do like support and resistance or I noticed like from the lives, the, like the things you do, I don't know. I can't think of the name, but uh, you do them with Sammy. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so I've noticed on so those I things, see. you kind of do it like, obviously we were both 
taught from Raquel, I think you were, if mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But we both don't trade like him. We both have our own. I've noticed, you, like, I do a different thing, obviously, and I know yeah. you do something different now too. So, like, what what are you? What yeah. Are you yeah. Doing? So obviously, so so obviously, I didn't actually. Well, so I how I learned this was basically I just went on a stream. I've been on a stream for like two and a half years. He never taught me anything. I just, I just, well, he did obviously, but on on the YouTube, he, he taught me his way, and I got it, and I and I got it. But there was some things that I didn't really like about his training thing. For example, <clears throat> he would enter after a fifty minute candles close straight away. Mm -hmm. He'd enter on, on, on anticipation, and that's fair enough. It normally did work out, but my issue was is that he he did have at the start of the candle uh, quite a lot of drawdown, because because I looked, and if you look here, there's you always have a bottom and a top wick, don't you? Really. Almost always, and some and, and some of them are quite aggressive, um, but they won't hit the low of the previous. Fair enough, which is what Raj's whole strategy is. But I don't like taking drawdown. Like, what's the point in me taking drawdown when I don't have to? Yep. So I'll wait for the lower wick to be made, and this is why I and I didn't enter. And, and yeah, so so that that bearish candle is a really good example of why I, I do this way. Because for example, Raj might have entered when that candle closed bullish really nicely. Obviously, you would have got slapped there. Whereas I didn't enter then, I wouldn't have entered until we started making that low wick and then start coming, pushing back up. Um, so, you know, if if I think if, if that was in New York, Raja would have been in that when that candle closed and he would have got slapped and I went off. So it's just another way of minimizing my risk. And I just found that making the lower wick and then when we stop pushing up higher, looking at the five minutes, start, start seeing some nice volume coming in, then I can enter. But it also means I can get a new stop loss. And that's what I was talking about there before when this new candle's made a lower wick. That lower wick is now going to be my stop loss, not the candle before, because I've just like I've just reduced my stop loss mm -hmm. yep. quite dramatically. And it shouldn't come back to that stop, you it shouldn't come back to that wick. So yeah, it shouldn't make a it's new basically low once it floats. Exa exactly. Yep. So it, it's reducing my stop tremendously. Like it's it's pretty decent. Mm -hmm. So I got because bad it, news. I mean, especially at the moment. I got yeah, bad yeah. news. I effed up this whole video. Oh God! I had YouTube music <laughs> playing in the background. <laughs> I totally fucked. Wait, right, too loud. I don't know. I mean, if it if we can't hear it, then it's great. I'm, this is gonna work, and this is gonna be a, a funny part of the video. But <clears throat> I had <clears throat> like copyright music playing in the background. Do you oh, mean to go on and just see if it's there? <clears throat> yeah, I gotta. I'll, when I once I end the Zoom. It'll pop it up and we'll be able to see, but <laughs> but let's end it here. And then if it's messed yeah, up, man. maybe you can join us again if definitely you do another would be so kind. 100%. Awesome. Oh, yes, definitely. Um, but yeah, it was lovely, lovely seeing you. And yeah, you definitely. Do, you always do London? Yeah, yeah. I always do London. You do New York too? Oh.